linear algebra way. Yeah. Old way we mean non-linear algebra way. New way linear algebra way. Yeah. And we want to practice our linear algebra way. Yeah. All right. So let me start this new method. Yeah. Oh. All right. So here. Yeah, let me just. Uh, you know, keep getting students to join in from the Zoom. Yeah. yeah. And I need to get my pen color. So you just familiar yourself the the problem yeah. we want to solve. Yeah. So now we know we need to solve this initial value problem. Yeah, but the linear system is this one. Yeah. So this time we use this matrix version. Matrix version, like this. Yeah. First, let's look at a characteristic equation. Yeah. All right. Yeah. A student here. A student here. Yeah. All right. So we. Last time we know, we calculate this determinant. That is the characteristic e equation. All right, so we, by the simple formula, determinant, so we get this factorization. You can see two real roots for this quadratic equation. Zero, negative 0, negative 0.04. After we get these two roots, can we write the general solution? Oh. Can we write, yeah, so these two are related, yeah, because these two E functions directly related to these two lambda values. Yeah. Later, yeah, today, just later today, we will see, we call these two values eigenvalues, eigenvalues, okay? All right, yeah. So let's put these two functions here temporarily, yeah, because later when we write the general solution, we need to use them. Yeah. All right. The question, how to represent the general solution? Yeah. General solution. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Argon values here. This time, now we move to one very important concept in linear algebra: eigenvalues. Eigenvalues, eigenvectors together. So we need to learn this concept first. Yeah. You know, the whole solution build around these two concepts: eigenvalue, eigenfunction. Uh, argument vectors. Yeah. All right. So first, these two argument values, we have found them. Yeah. So we can, yeah. So here, what's the definition of argument value? Yeah. So let's go back to the definition of the argument value. Argument value, when you have an A matrix here, this given A matrix, A y equals lambda y. In if you have uh, some lambda satisfies this equation, we call it eigenvalue. That simple. Okay, this special equation. Yeah. So you may ask why we consider this special equation. Yeah. This one, this special equation. You can see it has this special property is very useful 
in solving many application problems. Yeah. Here, look at the geometric meaning. Yeah. Here, before we go to the next step, when you look at this equation, let's consider geometric meaning. Yeah. So what's geometric meaning? Yeah. So you consider the, you know, when you look at a vector, you have a geometric understanding, right? Vector. In space, you have a vector, right? Yeah. So that's the geometric. So how do you understand a matrix here, two by two matrix? Matrix, we call a linear transformation, right? Matrix represents a linear transformation. Now you have a y vector in the space. Yeah. You apply matrix A on this y, that means you do some linear transformation on it. Okay? So you get another vector. A transforms y vector to another vector in the space. That's the geometric representation. Right. Now, this eigenvalue definition tells us when you choose some special y here, the y is not arbitrary y. Some special y, yeah. there exists. You will see there is some special y. When you apply the matrix transformation A on this y, your result, you get a vector. Its direction does not change on the same line. Okay, The transform, the vector, is on the same line before the transformation. Okay? Because lambda is a scalar number. Okay? It's a scale the old vector in some way. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. But along the same line, there is no change. Yeah. So this kind of this kind of special vector and the special value lambda, they are important. So we call lambda, we call the eigenvalue, y, we call the eigenvector. Okay? It's a pair. Eigenvalue, eigenvector pair here. Okay. All right. So that's the geometric understanding. Yeah. Now, after we have these two concepts, from now on, then we apply them we can represent our solutions in an easy, relatively easier way. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's continue. All right. Non-trivial y. Yeah. So, because this equation, there is a trivial solution. When y equals 0, it is a solution, right? But when we talk about argument vector, we never consider the trivial. Why? Yeah. So we only consider non-trivial why. Yeah. Yeah. That could be that that is the argument vector. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. So non-trivial why. Yeah. Argument vector. All right. Now, before we work on the solution. Yeah. yeah. Alright. So let me keep an eye here. Before we continue the solution, let us study argument values, argument vectors a little bit here. All right. How to find the argument values? We did it before, right? Yeah, but here, let me just uh, repeat. Uh, we start with this equation, ax equals lambda x. We want to solve this equation first. To solve it, yeah. Yeah. And here this equation must have a non trivial solution. Yeah. All right. So we require lambda should be chosen to make this equation have a non trivial solution. Otherwise, your lambda you you do not choose your lambda in the right way. Yeah. But how to choose lambda to make this equation 
have a non-trivial solution. So we solve this determinant equation, characteristic equation. If we find the roots of this characteristic equation, then if we use the one of the roots as the lambda, then that original equation ha must have a non-trivial solution. No. Okay. So based on the theorem, uh, basic properties we learned, yeah, we have that result. Yeah. All right, so whose roots are eigenvalues? Yeah. Algebraic, the ru roots. Yeah. So when I talk about the roots, remember last time I give you the fundamental theorem of algebra. By that, we have n roots. We allow complex roots. Yeah, don't worry. We allow complex roots. So we always we have n roots. Yeah. All right. How to find eigenvectors? After that, yeah. Now we have n eigenvalues, right? And let's pick one of the n eigenvalues and put it back to the original equation. We want to find an eigenvector. Yeah. So this time we get back to yeah all right yeah because here we only have two eigenvalues yeah. if we have n higher order then there are n eigenvalues yeah. here two all right for each eigenvalue there is an eigenvector yeah. all right oh another student here yeah i just need to keep checking yeah Last time, three students, uh, you know, stay outside the class for about 20 minutes. Yeah. All right. The first eigenvector. Yeah. So we plug in lambda y as our first eigenvalue in this equation. We want to find the first eigenvector. So here we use superscript. One represent the first eigenvector we want to solve this equation for x sup 1 yeah. all right how to solve we just solve this equation yeah. parenthesis the coefficient matrix it is known yeah. everything is known can we find x vector non trivial remember yeah you, you cannot just take an easy solution zero. Well, we don't need that. Yeah. We want a non-trivial solution. Yeah. All right. The solution can be found yeah, later in this example when we move to the solution. I show you how to find it. Okay. Yeah. Two by two. So easy. Yeah. Straightforward. Simple. Yeah. All right. Here we can cannot see. Yeah. The second eigenvalue, yeah, we do the same thing. This time, lambda 2, yeah, cho chosen for the eigenvalue, and then we solve this, another homogeneous linear system for a non-trivial solution. Okay, all right. Suppose we can find x1, x2, they are two eigenvectors. Why these two eigenvectors are important? We need to use them to write the general solution of our homogeneous linear system. Eigenvalue, eigenfunctions. Eigenvectors, we write the general solution. We use eigenvectors to write the general solution. See? Yeah. That's the reason they are important. Okay? All right. Yeah. How to solve homogeneous linear system yeah, after we have done? Yeah, here. Let's go back to our current problem. All right, A. Current problem A, eigenvalues, now uh, eigenvector. Let me show you how to find first, second eigenvector. Okay, all right. 
we need to solve these two homogeneous linear systems. The first one is this one. Okay? Yeah. A minus lambda 1 identity matrix. Yeah? I hope you know. Yeah. Diagonal 1, 1, 1, diagonal. Okay? Other entries 0. So A minus lambda 1 times identity matrix. So after your simplification, you get this matrix. Okay? That's the first homogeneous linear system. Second homogeneous linear system. Okay? Very simple. We need to solve these two homogeneous linear systems for non-trivial solutions for eigenvectors. All right, so next slide. Let me show you how to solve. Okay? So simple. Yeah. All right. Here, let's solve the first one. Okay, first one. First one, can you see something special in this first? Look at the matrix entries. Can you see some special properties here? Yes, determinant zero is one. Determinant zero is one. When you compare two rows, can you see something special? Two rows, how special they are. Two rows. Two rows, yeah, flip, flip, all right, yeah. Flip is one way. Another way, the first row, if you multiply negative 1, you get second row, right? The first one, you multiply negative 1, you get second one, all right? Yeah. So the second one is a constant multiple of the first one, right? Second row is just a constant multiple of first one. How do we call that? Well, another vector is a constant multiple of the first vector. What do we call? Relationship. Linear what? Yeah, all right, good. Yeah. So here, linear dependent. All right. The second vector is linear, linearly dependent of the first one. Linear, on the same line, linear. All right. Linear independent, two vector, they must form two, you know, two different directions. Linear dependent, two vectors point to the same line, same direction. Could be ob opposite, it's okay. Minus one, opposite, okay? But on the same line, all right? Same line, yeah. All right. Linearly dependent, that property, what does that property tell us? Okay, here, all right. That property tells us. All right. If the first row, first row, multiply this vector, we know, entry-wise multiplication, add it up, right? When we do matrix multiplication. When you use the first row and multiply this one equals zero, the second one multiply this vector also equal to zero. Yeah? Because zero, you just take a constant multiple of zero, and that's also zero, right? Yeah, because second row, when you do it, you just do the constant multiple of the first row. First row, you already know, it is, uh, when you do that multiplication, it's zero, okay? So that linear multiplication relationship tells us we don't need a second equation, we can cross out. Because it's redundant, okay? It basically, it just repeats the first equation, okay? Linear constant, linear multiple, constant multiple, constant multiple of the first equation. It does not provide extra new information. It essentially the same equation. Why we need to repeat the same equation twice, right? So when we solve it, we only need to solve the first equation. We don't need to, we can ignore the second equation because they are basically the same equation. Yeah. That's the meaning of linear dependent. No, that property. All right. So if you cross out the second row, can you see what simple x1, x2 can satisfy this equation? Can you see? Yeah, simple. Simple numbers. Can you see? 
just put some simple numbers, x1, x2, to make when they do that entry-wise multiplication adding together equals zero. Can you see quickly? Yeah. Just see the answer. One, one. How about that? One, one. Because these two numbers adding together equals zero. Just put one, one there. Okay? One times negative 0 0.02 plus negative, uh, positive 0 0.02 equals zero. Just, so the answer is one, one. Okay? One, one. All right. That's for first equation. Second equation, you see the same thing. The second row you just directly repeat the first row, right? So no new information provided from the second row. You can cross out, or you can ignore it. You don't need to do anything on the second row, OK? All right. You can also see a special solution of this second one, right? Yeah. One, negative one. One, negative one, adding together zero. So you can see the answers easily. Okay? So the first one solution is 1, 1. Okay? Or one of the solution. You have many solutions. We want to find the simplest one. Okay? You can put 100, 100, right? Another solution. But 1, 1 is the simplest, right? Yeah, the best. So we, we take 1, 1. Okay? All right. The second one, eigenvector 1 minus 1. So we find two eigenvectors. Two eigenvectors. Now we are ready to write the general solution. All right. Yeah. So we, when we go back to our original homogeneous linear system, ODE, yeah, with, yeah, because two eigenvalues corresponds to these two functions. When we write a general equation, we need to use eigenvalues in using these two functions. Eigenvectors, we also need to use to get the coefficient part. Yeah. Eigenvalue to get the function part. Eigenvector to get the coefficient part. Okay? Two parts together. We write the general solution. Now, it's the general solution. Y vector, general solution, we use vector form. Okay? Y vector function, it's a function. The first term, C1, arbitrary parameter, yeah, arbitrary parameter, then the first argument vector, then times the first function from the first eigenvalue, OK? All right. Then C2, second eigenvector, and the E function from the second eigenvalue. That's the general solution form. OK? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So this general solution, it satisfies the homogeneous, original homogeneous linear system, ODE. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Here. Linear algebra. Vector matrix way to write the general solution. Yeah. Here, uh, let me do verification. Yeah. So, if you, you are not sure if this general solution satisfy the homogeneous linear ODE. Let's do verification. The left hand side, let's take y prime on this vector expression. Derivative. Okay. All right. Now, when we take a derivative, yeah. here, yeah. how to take derivative of the first term? The first term, C1 is a constant. Vec this eigenvector 
we treat it as a vector constant. How about that? This c1 times this x sup 1 vector, it's a constant vector. Right? There is no variable t in it. So when you take the derivative, you can pass through this constant part. So you apply your derivative directly on this e function, and it just to copy this constant vector part. All right? Yeah, but that derivative by chain rule, you have that lambda 1. Multiply the constant. All right, that's the first term. Similarly, for the second term, yeah, so the constant part you keep, you only you apply derivative on the e function because that's the only variable part that you get a lambda 2 in multiplication with the constant coefficient part. Yeah. That's the derivative y prime. Okay? So that's the way you take the derivative of a vector in this way. All right. That, that's the left hand side. Now, yeah. So here, oh, all right. To do the right hand side, yeah, here, we know matrix, yeah, because it's an eigenvector, eigenvalue, eigenvector, we have this equation. All right. And for second eigenvector, we have that equation, yeah. So this time, let's work on the right hand side. A matrix multiply y vector, but the y vector we use this general solution form. Yeah. All right, so this time, A matrix, we do multiplication here. Look at C1, E function, they are scalar. Okay? Scalar, we can, you know, move to the front. Yeah, scalar. All right, so the first term, we only need to do the matrix multiplication with eigenvector. Okay? The two scalar numbers, we just keep them. Yeah. The scalar, okay? Yeah. They do not change the, the structure, so we, we just copy them. All right. For the second term, we do the same thing. C2, E2 function, they are scalar numbers. Then matrix multiply the argument vector. Yeah. Then now we can apply this argument value argument vector form here. Yeah. So we can simplify the first one. We just replace a times x sup one by lambda one x sup one. Yeah. Second, similar way. Yeah. For the simplification. Now you compare this, this form and the left-hand side form. They are the same, right? Now you can do the comparison, term-by-term term comparison. They are the same. Right. Yeah, that's the verification. So we know that it, this general solution is correct. Okay? It satisfies the original equation. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah, now to go to solve the IVP problem, we have the general solution. We just plug in, we just apply to initial conditions. Yeah. All right, so the general solution, the simple format, yeah. So first we get a you know simplest format. Yeah. Then two initial values t equals zero. Yeah. Y one zero, y two zero, yeah. So that is initial vector zero one hundred fifty initial vector equals this this vector, C one vector in C one C two expression. Okay? So then you can solve this linear equation easily. C1 equals 75, C2 equals negative 75. Yeah. 
So the final solution, you can write plug-in C1, C2, so you get a final solution. Think about so this whole process. Okay? Yeah. That's the way we use linear algebra to solve this linear system of ODE. Homogeneous? Hope, hope you you can understand the details. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So then we solve the second one. Second one similar. Yeah. So electric circuit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Hope you can follow. Yeah. Now, electrical network. This time, look at this graph, this picture. There are two circuits, electric circuits. Okay, two loops. Yeah. Two loops corresponds to two equations. Yeah. Each loop, we need to set up one equation. Okay. Yeah. By that, uh, you know, Kirchhoff voltage, you know, that. Yeah, <laughs> theorem. Yeah, yeah. Find the current I one, I two in the network figure. Assume all current and charges to be zero at t equals zero. Yeah. Initial condition. Yeah. The instant uh, when the switch is closed. Yeah. So that at zero, that instant, it, you close the switch. Yeah. So then you know. You need to calculate the I function, I1, I2 functions. Yeah. All right. Solution. First, we need to get that linear system. Yeah. We need to apply the Kirchhoff vo voltage law on the double circuits. No. Apply twice. Okay. The first loop, first time, second time. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so the first time yeah, along this loop, apply the Kirchhoff the voltage law. Yeah. First circuit, yeah. All right, along this loop, all right. This component, L, this component, L equals 1, 1 Henry. Yeah. By the voltage drop formula, we have that, right? L times derivative of the electric current, the current function, I1 prime. Yeah? Rate of change. By that formula, it should be the rate of change of the current. Yeah? So I1 prime. 1 times I1 prime. All right. Then, when the electric current passes through, this R1 component, resistance, R1 component, resistor, that component. That component, so look at, I1 pass through in the clockwise direction. I2 also passes through R1, you know, yeah, yeah here, uh, I1, from top down, I2 from bottom up. Two opposite directions, okay? Yeah. Same component, two different electric current pass through opposite direction. So we use I1 minus I2, then multiply R1, okay? So R1 is 4 times I1 minus I2. So that's the R, R1 part. There, this E constant 12 volts. Yeah. Battery, 12 volts. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first circuit equation. Second, second, there is no battery. Yeah. 
battery is in the first circuit, not in the second circuit. Okay, so second circuit, but we have three components: R1, C, and R2. Three components. So the second circuit, six times I2 plus four times I2 minus I1. This time, I2 is the direction we follow. I1 goes the opposite direction, so we minus I1. Yeah. I2 we treat as the you know current direction we follow. All right. Yeah. So I1 are uh, opposite, so we use I2 minus I1 times four. Yeah. For the C capacitor C C. The formula we use need to use one over C, right? Yeah. The formula is one over C. Okay. Yeah. Then Q electric charge Q Q is the integral of I two. Look at the Q term, the integral of I two. So we get this equation, second circuit. Yeah. But integral so here not convenient, so we take derivative of the second. Equation, yeah. Derivative more convenient, right? Yeah. So the first equation after simplification, we get this form. Second, this one, but we need to take derivative to, yeah. You know, after some simplification, we get this equation. Two linear equations. Yeah. All right. All right, yeah. Two linear equations, but this form I one prime, we want to eliminate I one prime in the second equation. So we use the first equation substitution in the second equation to eliminate I one prime, because we want to write a standard form. Okay, linear system we also have standard form. So before we do the solution, we want to get a standard form. Yeah. So this step, we want to get a standard form for the second linear equation. Yeah. So that's the standard form. Yeah. Now we write a linear system in this way. Linear system, okay, and matrix way. Our standard form is the matrix way, right? Yeah, matrix. Yeah, a y plus g vector. This one is a non-homogeneous linear system. Non-homogeneous. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Next, we need to solve this linear system. This time, non-homogeneous linear system. Yeah. General solution, particular solution, adding together. Same as before, yeah, but here we need to use eigenvalue, eigenvector. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's continue. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, let's go. Yeah. This slide, yeah. At the beginning, we need to solve this initial value problem. All right, Again, uh, here, the function vector, here we use j, <laughs> yeah, I just use the same notation as in the textbook. The reason using j, because i, we reserve it for the identity matrix, i, identity. So we don't want to confuse with identity matrix, yeah, so we use the j, yeah. all right, yeah. Then j prime, the vector, you take a derivative, then you just take derivative for each component inside the vector. Derivative. Yeah, that's the derivative of a vector. Yeah. Component wise, derivatives. Yeah. All right. A matrix, two by two, yeah. and a G matrix. Now we need to solve this linear system. All right. 
eigenvalue, eigenvector first. The first step. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the standard form, j prime equals a j plus g. That's the standard form of this linear system, ODE. Yeah. First order, linear ODE, standard form. Yeah. All right. Calculate the eigenvalues. Yeah. We just calculate the de determinant, a minus lambda i2. That's the that determinant. Okay. Calculate this determinant. Two by two determinant. Yeah. Then by the formula you get this one. After simplification, you get that equation. Quadratic equation, you find two roots. Yeah. Negative two, negative zero point eight. Two real roots. Yeah. They Correspond to two e functions, right? E functions. Yeah. Yeah. But we also need to calculate eigenvectors. Let's calculate the first eigenvector. Yeah. A times lambda one identity matrix. A times lambda identity matrix. This homogeneous linear system. We need to find a solution because the determinant of this coefficient matrix is zero. That means the second row vector is linearly dependent to the first vector. Okay? So the second equation redundant. All right? Second linearly dependent means redundant. All right? No new information given. So we can ignore the second one. Can you see some simple x1, x2 that satisfy the first equation? How about two one? How about two one? Okay, simple numbers. You can use your eyes to see it quickly, right? Yeah. So the solution x one x two. Let's take a simple vector two one. Okay, as simple as possible. We can see it quickly. Two one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so that is the first eigenvector. X sup 1 eigenvector. All right. Similarly, to calculate second eigenvector, we plug in lambda 2 in the e equation A minus le lambda 2 I2 parenthesis times the eigenvector equals 0. And same idea. The second row redundant, we only need to look at the first row. Multiply the vector equals zero. Can you see four? Yeah, I mean one zero point eight. Yeah, right? One zero point eight. Yeah. Try to find simple solution. Okay? Use your eye, try to find a simple solution. Oh, question. Cross out the second row. Yeah. Yeah, because determinant equals zero, second row is always linearly dependent to the first row. It's redundant. Yeah. When you solve equation, it's redundant. Right? Redundant, we don't need it. Yeah. Cross out. Okay? Yeah. Only need to satisfy the first row. If the first row is satisfied, second row automatically satisfied. Okay? Automatic set, set right. You can check one times this number, zero point eight times that number, adding together also zero. Okay, automatically satisfied. You do not lose anything. All right, you do not lose anything. Yeah. All right. So two eigenvectors are ready for us to write the general solution. Okay. So the next slide. Let's write a general solution. Oh, question. Where, OK, I'm following until, so the eigenvector two by two matrix, where are those values coming from? Where are these values coming from? Yeah. yeah. Coming from A times lambda one, 
identity matrix. Yeah. The first coefficient, you plug in lambda 1. Lambda 1 is negative 2. Okay? Negative 2 times identity matrix. Yeah. All right. So then, can you see? Do I need me to draw, draw it? Anyone? Can you see the details? If anyone need me, you know, draw a little bit. Yeah. Probably, yeah, here, because I have some space here, probably a few students at a Zoom side, they may need me show that part. Yeah, let me, let me do it. Yeah, because it won't be long. It won't be long. Yeah. All right. So let me just calculate the first coefficient matrix. Yeah. So then you will know the second. All right. Yeah. So let me use this space to do the calculation. First, I write A matrix. Yeah. So you know A matrix. This is A matrix. Okay? Yeah. A matrix. Negative 4, 4, negative 1.6, 1.2. Second, I write, I take lambda 1, this value, negative 2. Negative 2 times identity matrix, that is negative 2 here, negative 2 here, 0, 0, right? Negative 2 multiply identity matrix. On the main diagonal, negative 2, negative 2. Yeah. Other entries, 0, okay? Yeah. Matrix subtraction, you know matrix subtraction, right? Entry-wise subtraction. Entry-wise subtraction. The first row, minus 2, that's plus 2. So minus 4 plus 2, that's minus 2, right? The first row, 4 minus 0, so it's 4. Second, yeah, one point, negative 1.6 minus 0, it's one, negative 1.6. Then 1 1.2 plus 2, 3.2. Right? Yeah. So that is the coefficient, first coefficient matrix. Okay? Yeah. For the second one, you do the same thing, yeah, but you use the lambda 2 argument value. Okay? Yeah. You do this way, right? Similar way, but here, lambda 2 on the diagonal, okay? Lambda 2 on the diagonal. Then, you know, do subtraction. Yeah. That's the way we, we calculate the coefficient matri matrices. Okay? Yeah? Yeah? So, any step, if you don't understand, just, you know, let me know. Yeah. Okay? All right. Yeah. So let's finish this question uh, before the break. Oh, another student. Uh, maybe drop it out. Yeah. All right. General solution. Yeah. So here, in this left corner, I write the general homogeneous part, J sub H. Yeah. Because we still, we need a particular JP part yeah, to, to complete the, the final solution. Yeah. So next slide, we will calculate JP particular solution. All right. Yeah. So now, how to calculate particular solution? Yeah. All right. Yeah. For this equation. Yeah. So JP should satisfy this equation. Yeah. All right. This time, we want to take a special JP. Special JP. How special it is. Yeah. How special it is. Yeah. All right. Can you think about a J? We know JP is a vector. Is a vector. Can you think about a constant vector for JP? Constant vector. There is no T function. No T inside JP. Constant vector. That means J prime equals zero. 
left hand side JP prime gone. JP prime gone, so A times JP plus G equals zero. That way we can find JP. How about that? That that simple way. Okay? Yeah. Alright. So make assumption to simplify. Let's take JP a constant vector A. Constant vector, yeah. So so you may ask why you take yeah, because here we want to make a simple if we can find a solution, then it's done. If if no solution, then we need to modify. Okay? If no solution, we need to this A need to plus T times another vector. Okay? T times another constant vector. A t plus T B T times B vector. Then we try to determine A and B. Okay, that way. Then we can find a solution. Yeah. Alright. So here. Yeah. Fortunately, here we can find a solution. Otherwise, we need to modify our assumption. Okay? Our assumption could be wrong. Yeah. It could be wrong, but here it's co correct. Yeah. All right. So now after we plug in to this original equation, we get capital A times little a vector plus g vector equals zero. Capital A is known, g is known, so A can be calculated. Right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let me finish. Yeah. Uh, two slides before the break. All right. Question. Is there a solution for, yeah, A matrix is this one. How to find the solution? Can anyone, yeah, this is two by two linear system. Anyone can see the solution easily. Yeah. Here, one thing, the determinant of A is non-zero. What does it tell us? When the determinant of a matrix is non-zero, what does it tell us, this property? Invertible. Matrix A is invertible. Its inverse exists. A, there is inverse. That's important. To solve equation, you want the inverse, right? Matrix inverse. Yeah. A inverse. All right. So A is invertible, all right? Yeah. So we write this equation as A times little a equals negative g. A is invertible, so you can multiply its inverse, both sides. So you get A equals negative A inverse times g. Both known, you can calculate it. Yeah. Question, how to calculate A inverse? Let's do 10 minute break. Yeah. Yeah, because I at least need five more minutes. Yeah. Five more minutes.